Hey guys, this is uh, Captain Cootie here, and I'm just going to go ahead and show you the uh, Ludlum 2241-3 survey meter, okay? This is our meter that we use primarily uh, in conjunction with the entire Pima County Hazmat team, uh, and, it, and it's a good meter. This meter is a uh, digital display, auto-ranging meter, um, and has the capabilities to detect alpha, beta, and gamma radiation um, at various rates. So, with that said, um, the easy way to remember how many probes you can associate with this meter is just that last dash three. That's how I've always remembered it. Dash three means three probes. That's how I've remembered it. Um, so a brief overview of the, me of the meter. Right here on the side we have a check source. This is cesium-137. It's a beta and uh, low level gamma emitter, but pr primarily mainly beta. Um, also with this model is the battery case in here. It takes two D-cell batteries. Um, we leave the batteries out of it to uh, ensure that they don't corrode. Um, right here, these toggle switches. This is audio on and off. Um, you can switch the audio on and off. And uh, even with the audio off, it has two preset alarms that you have to get set at the calibration factory. And what that does is it, uh, it will break through even the off setting. So even if you accidentally toggle it off and you're, and you're getting into something that's a little hot, that alarm will break through. The first alarm is called an alert and the second alarm is actually an alarm. Um, next sw toggle switch right here is the FS switch. The F has the rabbit, the S has the slow. It's pretty self-explanatory, fast and slow. This is how fast that the probes you are using are reading uh, the environment around them. Um, the fast range is exactly what it sounds, fast. And it has more variance because it's so fast. If you're trying to get more dialed in, a more consistent number, switch it down to S and you'll get less variance on the slow setting. Um, has the scaler and the rate, we leave it on the rate setting. Um, this toggle switch has a little lock here, so it's actually kind of hard to move. You have to pull it up and over, which makes it really nice. Um, here's the light button, you hit the light, it'll illuminate the display and the reset button. And I'm gonna show you how to use that later. Right here is where the cable plugs in and it has a little twist lock. Um, one thing to note about this meter is that the cable and the probe that you're using has to be plugged in um, prior to turning on the meter. Each one of these uh, three probes we have here uses a different voltage coming from the meter. So um, by uh, incorrectly using the probe, you have the chance of, of getting an incorrect reading and or damaging the meter and or the probes. So all the probes are color coordinated right here with these three dots, one, two, and three. Um, I had to put the one, two, and three on there, obviously, because you guys know, don't see much of the color. Um, on the back side of these probes, oh, there's the one, here's the two, and uh, here is the three. Okay, so this multifunction switch right here in the middle is also the on off. So we've got the uh, probe one connected right now. So we're going to go ahead and, and turn it to probe one. The meter will start up and it'll begin giving us our count. Um, the first probe we have here is the 44-9 uh, uh, GM pancake probe. Um, some people call it the Frisker. Uh, it comes with this little cap here to protect this little waffle in here. Um, this probe is used to detect alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, and we use it primarily to detect uh, contamination uh, through decon or of an area. Um, low and slow with everything we use here uh, as far as radiation. Um, the range here is one count per minute to 100,000 counts per minute. Uh, and with that, um, you can use this probe in various ways to figure out what type of radiation you're dealing with. Um, so we know that alpha only goes one to two inches, is easily stopped by a piece of paper. Um, so right here we have a background of about 70 counts per minute. And we're gonna come up here, and uh, like I said, cesium-137 uh, is a, a primarily a beta and a gamma emitter, so we're gonna, it's gonna go up. It's just the way it is. I don't have an individual alpha source, an individual beta, and an individual gamma source to really show you how to do this the correct way. But uh, as a matter of fact, just to avoid the confusion, we're just gonna go ahead and turn it off. Um, but one way to detect, al to detect alpha radiation would be to hold that probe within that one to two inches for that alpha range, right? And then get your hits. Well, yeah, you know, well, 
this probe is going to read anything at this range right now. So if you wanted to eliminate the alpha, all you would have to do is A, either move away farther than one to two inches, or trick of the trade is you flip this over and the metal backing plate on this should be enough to block any of the alpha emitters um, coming off of that source, um, which would eliminate the alpha, which would leave you only with maybe some really strong beta or uh, or definitely gamma radiation. Gamma radiation would go through the back of this with no problem. Well, now if you want to determine if you had beta radiation, you're going to move out to the beta, uh, past the alpha into the beta range and uh, meter that way, right? Well, gamma radiation is the same way. You're going to move way far away, and gamma radiation is going to go through the back of this at a, at a far distance. So that's a good way to kind of... Uh, break apart what you think you're dealing with alpha beta or gamma um, so as you turn it on you got probe one and it's going to uh, start counting and we'll take the cover off this has a small metallic cover but we're gonna go ahead and get a count off of it anyway because it's primarily gamma and beta right so I would say primarily the gamma is coming through here um, and blocking most of the beta. Okay, so we'll go ahead and open the cover. See, we're at 548, and uh, we're going to get a significantly different reading here and uh, a, at a significantly different speed. And remember, we're on the slow setting here too, so we'll go ahead and put this here. Bang, bang. Yep, see how it auto ranged there? Gave you that decimal point. That's a cool feature. It's, it, we don't have to deal with it. So it keeps creeping up, keeps creeping up. Um, and if we left it here, I'm sure we'd probably uh, get to the end range and all. But for sake of time, we're just going to keep moving on. So you get it real saturated, if you will, the meter. See how it takes a while to come back down? You don't want to wait for it. Hit this reset button. Boom. And it zeroes it right back out. Right here, if you wanted the light, turn the light on illuminates your screen real nice feature okay so I went ahead and labeled these probes um, alpha beta gamma um, this one right here is the cylinder probe it is the 44-2 uh, this is for gamma only but it's for real low or medium uh, range gamma emitters from one micro or I'm sorry one milli r an hour to uh, 25 micro rem per hour so it's just it's a low dose but we use this as a survey uh, uh, probe. This is the probe you're going to want um, going down range uh, to determine a hot zone, uh, a generalized survey to try to zero in on something. Now if you have something really hot, you're going to want this other gamma probe right here, okay? And like I said, I went ahead and labeled it for you. This is the 133-8 uh, Geiger Mueller, um, also known as the peanut probe. This is for very high radiation surveys. We're talking into 150 uh, millirem an hour to 1000 R per hour. Um, yeah, this, this puppy, if you're using it, you're dealing with something that's significantly hot and you're not going to want to be around it for too long. Um, like I said, they're all coordinated with the, the tabs. And uh, this meter has to go out annually to be uh, reset, recalibrated, and reevaluated. And uh, it's done up in Phoenix. And it takes some time to do that because we have to drive it up there um, to avoid uh, hazardous waste shipping um, due to the radiation factor of the meter. So... Um, some other things to think about here when you're talking about radiation is the normal background in Tucson is about 8 to 15 uh, uh, micro R per hour. Um, so we consider a, a source present in an area at two times background. So it's always good to step away in an area that you know is clean, get that background reading, and then multiply that by two. And if you get two times background, you've got something that we need to look at. Um, we set our hot zones at uh, 2 MR per hour. So with 2 MR per hour, we're definitely be using this guy, right? Because this goes from 1 micro R to 25 milli R. This one starts at 150 milli R. You won't even, you'll be way past the hot zone if you decide to use this one. So, um, and remember our dose limits, guys. 5 MR per hour for all activities, 10 MR for protecting uh, property and infrastructure, 25 MR for life-saving and large property protection, and greater than 25 MR is uh, voluntary only with knowledge of risk. And remember, that's with SCBAs, okay? Well, that's all I have about right now for the Ludlam. Um, I'll go ahead and post this up, so we'll get it on the hazmat brief.